And now for a session produced by our underwriter, Fannie Mae, please welcome Antonio Marquez, Principal and Managing Partner of Comunidad Realty Partners, and Jeffrey Hayward, Executive Vice President and Head of Multifamily at Fannie Mae. be here. Um, Antonio and I are going to have an opportunity to talk about something they're doing that's quite spectacular. And it really, um, I think, demonstrates the view that we at Fannie Mae have that communities are not just about the houses themselves, but are about the things that you do with the people who live in the houses or the apartments. And so let me uh, cue up a short video that I think will begin to explain why we're having this conversation. Pues casi no me alcanza mucho, pero pues cada mes sí lo, lo pago, lo pago. I was kind of blessed to land here because this was my first place on my own, first apartment. So uh, once I realized how affordable it was, you know, the rest was history. La comodidad, entonces siempre me ha gustado el precio que no están y la pues ahora sí que se siente un gusto en esta área. My family was immigrants from Mexico. They came in the United States. Very humble beginnings. In terms of comunidad, I see my father and my family and a lot of these residents. And some of the challenges that they are having are similar to what we had as a kid. And so we feel very passionate about providing services and programs to them that we didn't have growing up that actually could potentially change their lives in a positive way. Ultimately, it allows our residents to have gainful employment and afford rent. So after school programs for families, so that they can go out and work a nine to five, and the kids can stay out of trouble. Oh, we also have health and wellness, like Zumba. And health screening and biometric screening. Preserving workforce housing is more important than ever. Comunidad to me means having an extended family that's going to look out for you. Comunidad to me means family, it means unity and caring. Antonio, he's a magnificent leader who treats people like family. Well, Antonio, I can't tell you how uh, excited I am to have this opportunity to interview you. Um, and I, great stories like what's happened with Community Dad start with a leader who has a history. And I'd love for you to just tell our audience a little bit of your personal story, which is in the video a little bit, but just yeah. a little bit of your personal story. Yeah. Um, my story really starts with my family and my heritage. Um, and it's really an immigrant story, uh, trying to achieve the American dream. And um, my father was a Hispanic immigrant, um, very poor, humble beginnings, uh, had no more than a fifth grade education. Um, his version of the American dream was to provide a roof over his family, um, had food on the table, and to provide for his family, right? And um, he's an immigrant worker, he's a field worker, and um, he and my mother started a company out of their garage, and they were distributing Hispanic food products, and that turned into the largest Hispanic food uh, distribution and Hispanic food brand, uh, one of the largest in the country. And so, um, you know, through that, through that hard work and that sacrifice, um, I, uh, I, you know, grew up and worked in not only company, but these underserved communities. So um, it gave me an interesting uh, vantage point and uh, really gave me, and really kind of shaped and formed my vision for the opportunities in these communities. And also gave me, uh, a unique lens, not only in terms of the challenges in these communities, but, but the solutions and the opportunities, ultimately. Um, and so through that, I started Community Dodd, um, uh, really with the intention of providing um, really a private market solution to a public issue in these communities right. that I grew up in, um, but doing it in a way that was thoughtful, um, that was uh, specialized, that was ultimately curated for, um, for these, these communities and creating a living environment that was differentiated. 
Um, and so, uh, and we wanted to also use housing as a vehicle for that positive change. Um, so in creating the, this kind of curated living experience, kind of addressing the needs, wants, and cultural idiosyncrasies, uh, we wanted to provide more than just shelter, as we say. We wanted to provide services and programs and find more dimension you know, within just the box, right? Let's think outside the box. Um, and so that's what we did. We created a brand around it. Um, and we've now acquired 9,000 units of workforce housing throughout the country, um, focused on impact investing in housing, where we are coalescing social, environmental, and economic um, uh, uh, gains and, and objectives. And we've done the vast majority of, of those uh, units, I don't know if, if you know this, Jeff, but through Fannie Mae, actually. You guys have been an incredible partner to us. So one of the things that I just love about your story is it's innovative. It really, it really takes apart the, this is a place where I sleep and this is a place where I live and thrive and right. educate my right. family. Um, how can you scale this model that Community Dot has developed and done in these communities? How can you scale that with others? Right. Or how can we scale it together as partners and, Absolutely. and, and the like? Uh, so from my standpoint, it's really quite simple. Um, at the end of the day. I mean, it's a people business, and our mantra is actually people serving people. Um, and so the question really becomes, how do you codify that, right? Because there's a lot of abstraction, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of different things. Um, we look at um, you know, the asset being our residents, ultimately. And so how can we create an environment where there are you know, structured programs and services um, around education? health and wellness, jobs and economic advancement. Those are the three primary pillars um, because we believe that if you can provide those services and opportunities um, and enrichment, we can elevate our residents to make more and reduce their household expenditures. So the jobs and the economic advancement, resume building, job placement, workforce skills training helps on the income side. We also believe that we can actually influence um, in effect, you know, household expenditures going down through after school programs, which reduce costs, transportation costs, lower health care costs, all these things that we can do again, because we look at the sticks and bricks as just a vehicle for providing services. It's really the people that matter. And so if you can create that in a structured form, which we've created a blueprint around it um, and a formula for that, and we call it our secret salsa, um, we've been able to replicate that, okay? We, we've been able to do it in 9,000 units throughout the country. Um, there was a lot of skeptics in terms of how are you gonna make money in, in right, lower right. income communities, right? I mean, that, that's, that's, you know, incomes aren't rising, stagnating wages. But the reality is if you provide a differentiating living experiences, these families are trying to care for their kids, right? They will pay and they will, they will retain, they will stay in, in these communities for a long period of time if you provide something that's valuable to them and their families. So, so one of the things I think I hear you saying here is that your turnover rate of apartments, people right. that come to live in a community, that community, they stay because of this holistic approach. Precisely, yeah. They, they stay because when the lease comes up and there's an expiration, looking you know, in the market, it's, it's a very commoditized industry. That's why we think it's such a, a, a vast opportunity. But if you provide things that are relevant, that are value add to that living experience, again, you know, it, it has to be very targeted. It has to be very specific. I'd say one of the lessons that we learned as we built the company is that we felt, okay, let's check the box. Let's do a bunch of different services and let's just basically impose that in the community. No, it, it needs to work inward out, right? And so that was a lesson that we learned in terms of engaging and galvanizing our residents, them telling us what they want, and then we would curate the, the proper services for them. So we've got kind of this menu, and that menu is right size and fit for different communities in different areas. The Southeast in Miami may be different than a Dallas, for instance. Um, and it's really kind of um, tailored to the ethnic and, and you know, resident composition and the de different demographics that exist in, in, in different properties throughout the country. And, and I think the fact that you guys pick, based on the locale, the menu of services and what people want, I think that's a scalable thing. That's something right. others can look at and say, I can scale that idea, but I've got to make sure that I, it, it fits in the place that I'm at. Precisely. Yeah. And I mean, you know, perfect example of that is, you know, we in, in certain areas, we may have English as a second language. Other areas where there may be, we have assets that are high African American concentration, high Middle Eastern concentrations. So we focus on different programs in those different, you know, regions. Um, you know, my example, actually, when we're uh, in the back room is even in San Antonio, 
Um, and and, and our, our strategy is really about diversity. It's about inclusion. Um, a lot of multifamily housing has a preponderance of a lot of Hispanic residents. That's just by virtue of where we're at and, and the growth story. Um, but we have a very diverse resident base. And so we try and curate and provide what is relevant to that particular resident composition in each community. In, in, any, as, as we get ready to, to, to exit, any other lessons that you've learned along the way that you could pass on to everyone? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, it, it starts with people at, at the end. And I, I know it sounds cliche and everything else to that effect, but I, I think um, in real estate, we tend to believe that it's sticks and bricks and it's effectively financial engine. You know, that's how you add value at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, and, and maybe this is just because of my family and some businesses that we've started, but um, real estate is no different than any other business. It, it has to be customer centric. It has to be tailored. Um, I think we, we for, forget that. I think we just look at it as, you know, just another static uh, asset as opposed to a very dynamic, thriving, vibrant thing. Um, the other thing that I'd say is really don't uh, be afraid to talk about what you're, you believe in, what you're passionate about. And, and, and I think when, when we started the business, um, a lot of the private equity groups that we would go to um, didn't understand it. They didn't believe it. They were skeptical. Mm -hmm. uh, we were fortunate enough to, um, uh, to find Thrive um, out of Austin, and they've been an incredible partner to us. And they just got it, like, intuitively, right? <laughs> and, it was, it was, and when it clicks, it clicks. Yeah. And so I think, you know, my mission really, and the reason that I started Comunidad um, was not only because I'm just having fun and I'm very passionate about this. I could have stayed with the family business, but I'm just having um, a lot of fun, but also to illuminate what's going on in these underserved communities, because this is where I come from. This, this is my small way of, of, of providing value. But if I can actually um, you know, showcase and illuminate what we've done and create this blueprint for other peers and multifamily owner operators and other groups that, are, that really have a, a, an interest in this, which really, if you're a multifamily, you, you should. Right. Uh, I think you'd naive, be naive to not. Um, then that's my real goal. I, I'd love to replicate this and have a, kind of this blueprint for scale that, that, that transcends us and Comunidad. Well, Antonio, I just want to thank you for what you and Comunidad are doing every day, and I appreciate this opportunity. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Jeff.